that in Jesus Christ. Kids, everyone, you're dismissed to Sunday school. Don't let me keep you from that. The Sunday school classes, go ahead. But we'll talk about that a little bit uh, more in the worship service. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to start in Genesis 1. Just kind of going to do a little uh, ad lib commentary uh, through the book. There's just so much meat there. And we're not going to get deep into it. Just talk a little bit about the different theories that I've heard over the years. God don't tell us a lot about uh, many of those things. He records it, and he tells us that that's his word, and it's settled forever in heaven, and, and, and we're to believe it. Now, there's folks you can make some different, can come to different conclusions from the same scripture, and we'll, we'll see that uh, this morning when it comes to the creation story. A lot of different theories out there. Some of those theories are scriptural. There's the president again. They just won't leave me alone. I thought... I thought he'd sleep in after his China visit, but I guess I'll, let me figure out how to shut this off, and we'll be all set. Uh, in times past, I have just thrown it, but I don't think that kept it quiet. All right. So take your Bibles, turn to Genesis 1 this morning. Genesis chapter 1. And you'll see that God said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, I've held the personal opinion that most, the great majority of a person's political convictions can be determined based upon the fact of whether he believes Genesis 1-1 or he don't believe it. If a man believes that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, I can probably tell you what his political positions are going to be, especially those who don't believe in the beginning God, because that's the group that are, are coming up with every way in the world to convince you that there isn't a God and that all of man's answers are in uh, with man, with mankind. We just, we, they just don't get it. Uh, Genesis is a book of beginnings, so we'll see here it says in the beginning God. God's before all things. By him all things consist. Uh, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now there's theories on Genesis 1-1. Now there's uh, folks that as we then read on and we'll see the, the six day creation story. Uh, some claim that Genesis 1-1 was a completed act. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, a completed act. And then it says, and the earth was void. And, and, and that group says that that means uh, the earth that was, their judgment. There was judgment. I call it judgment came. And God made this earth void. It's a pretty interesting theory. May be the right one. I don't know. Now, Ken Ham and Ken Hoven and some of those uh, folks, uh, when you start talking about the dinosaurs and all that, they say they 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 are still here. They were, you know, and and that kind of, kind of thing. I don't know. I do know this. Uh, when I first started studying this out, and you read different commentators, if if the fossil evidence is true, where did they come from? Where did they come from? If they're true. But here's the problem. Uh, you see today with, with your media, and you'll see with the rewriting of history, it's hard to tell uh, what b is being reported and what is actually true. Uh, because uh, th they'll find a bone, and they'll build a, a paper mache creature, 40 tons, <laughs> you know, paper mache creature based on one or two little bones and tell you that's what it looks like. And, you got to be careful with that. I, I just don't buy into all, all, all those reports from someone who isn't a Bible believer to begin with. So if the fossil evidence is true, where would they have come from? Well, there's some, uh, some hints. Uh, 
Peter Ruckman teaches that there, and Clarence Larkin taught this, I think he got it from Larkin, that there was a pre-Adam earth. And you look over there in Job, and it's, uh, uh, the Lord asked, <coughs> Satan said, from whence comest thou? And he says, from walking to and fro upon the earth. And we see, we saw uh, last week where uh, the devil offered the Lord the kingdoms of this world as if they were his to offer. He is referred to as the God of this world. And then you'll see the story of the sons of God. In creation, it said the sons of God shouted for joy when everything was created. Shouted for joy. Well, who are these sons of God? Uh, Ken Ham and, and Ken Hovind don't go into much of that. And, and I've always looked for, the, for that because Ken, Ken Hovind is brilliant. I like his teaching. He's, he's smart on science. And he really refutes evolution. Now, I'm talking out apart from evolution because it just don't work in any scriptural theory. Uh, uh, an, an, uh, in any scriptural sense, let me put it that way. The theory of evolution, and that's what it is. It's a theory. It was called a theory when it came about. A theory is an educated guess. This guy sees all, all, all this, Darwin, and he said, Man, my best guess is here's how it happened. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's always called an educated guess based upon on, on what he knew about science. He guessed here's how everything came about. But God said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And at the time that that, that theory was fought out in the Stokes Monkey Trial in Dayton, Tennessee, uh, science, the knowledge that we have now was not available. And, and the more knowledgeable scientists have, have gotten true science, the more they believe it's intelligent design, that it, you, it couldn't have just all come about. So I, I don't even include Evolution, it just don't work. Throwing, throwing a watch and a million pieces up in the air and, and it comes down a wristwatch. It don't work that way. Uh, there's two things that, that uh, fute that. One is the uh, first and second law of thermodynamics refutes evolution. Uh, man, evolution teaches that everything gets better and better. But uh, things deteriorate. Even in a, in a, in a, a, a vacuum, things will deteriorate. We've talked about that before. You can set a, uh, you can buy buy a, a brand new Chevy, and you can sit it out in the field and leave it there 20 years, and come back and see how it runs, see how it does. It didn't. It won't get better and better. But that that being said, we look at this sons of God thing, and remember Satan when he was created. Satan is a created being. And, and he said he was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. Uh, he was more beautiful than any of the beasts of the field when he shows up on, on earth with Eve and Adam. And it looks like he was in charge. And he got lifted up in pride. It, uh, some teach, Larkin taught that there, there was, before Adam on this earth, there was a, a group here that's called the Sons of God created beings, the sons of God, like Satan. He was in charge, but he blew it. Iniquity was found in him. He got lifted up in pride, and judgment came, and that's where that earth is void thing came from. That was judgment. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Earth was void and without form. Now, do I believe that? I'm, I'm not sure how uh, that came about. I believe the book, it's going to be right every time. It's, it's our assessment of it and perspective on, on what it says that we have to come up with. Now, and, and the different theories on creation is not a mountain for me to die on. Have nothing to, uh, to, to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, if it's important to you, uh, I always loved looking at the book as an investigator. That's what I did for many years. I was a trained investigator. And I enjoyed digging through that stuff. Digging about the, the, the sons of God. And, and, and then over in Genesis 6, you'll see where, where uh, that outer space visit. Where the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took wives of them. And they had offspring. And it says uh, these were mighty men of old, men of renown. That's where the giants came from. 
Man, that, that's some pretty weird stuff. You want to talk about some sci-fi stuff, go to Genesis chapter 6. That gets kind of, kind of strange. I'll go over there. Now, Schofield, in his notes, says that the that, uh, that sons of God is just the line of Cain. There's a line of Seth and a line of Cain, and one's a godly line and one's an ungodly line. But most commentators says that, that, that don't make any sense. A.W. Pink said that the, the, when the flood came, it destroyed the world of the ungodly. There was no godly line. There's a messianic line. The line of the Messiah, but it wasn't godly. You had a, a harlot in, in the mix. You had people that had killed in that messianic line. There was no godly line. There's a messianic line, but there wasn't a godly line. And, the, and they, they do that to try to get rid of the story in Genesis 6 about the sons of God. In Genesis 6, it says, when, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right, let me see what, what uh, Alan Hoffman says about that here. He says, A private interpretation of the sons of God misapplies Isaiah 43, 6, John 1, 12, to make them a godly line of Seth. The former passage refers to the nation of Israel. The latter refers to born-again Christians. There cannot be a godly line of any race of people. The marriage of, uh, the marriage of the unrighteous with the righteous does not produce giants. These strange marriages occurred again. It says, after that, the flood, the sons of God refer to angels who appear in relationship with Satan and the creation. And it gives you the references. And so... Uh, it says, and since all angels are men, and, and if that's a newsflash to you, it shouldn't be. There's no angel in the Bible that is a female gender. Every angel that shows up in Scripture is, is, is male. They're considered gods from outer space, but they appear to come, according to Psalms and other passages, for, uh, some mention the underworld, they will, all appear, they will appear frequently during the tribulation. All right. But then it says, and the, they took them wives of all which they chose. And it said, for there were giants in the earth, verse 4, in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Who would that be? Anybody as a kid remember, see all the stuff about the mythological Greek gods, Thor and Apollos and Zeus. Where would all of that come from? You hear them talking about, man, you look at that Mayan culture and these cultures, it looks like there was some intelligent civilization way ahead of their time. That's because the Bible said there were intelligent folks that made it with men here, with, with women here on earth. So it can get pretty deep. And uh, what all, you know, I know that I believe what it says. I'm just not sure how to put it all in, in context and in perspective. And, you know, all that was taken away, and God started over again with Adam is, is, is one theory. God sent judgment to the earth. The earth was void without form and darkness upon the face of the deep. And then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, so uh, here's the creation story, or as some say, the recreation. And I'm not sure which. I do know that God told Adam and Eve to replenish. He didn't tell them to plenish. He told them to replenish. And we'll talk a little bit later. It says there was no rain on the earth. There's a mist covered the ground hmm. that, that came up. I remember years ago reading the canopy theory. Not even sure how it goes any, any, anymore. But let's read on. It said the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said let there be light. 
and there was light. Now, this isn't sunlight. The sun don't uh, show up until a little later. This must be the cosmic light of God, the glory, the, the light of God. The Bible says God is light. And, uh, and God said, let there be light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And called, God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning was the first day. And God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. A lot of theologians that I respect and I'm, I hold this position appears that there's waters that separate us from the third heaven. Where God resides. There's, there's three heavens. Uh, remember Paul saying that he was caught up to the third heaven. You've got the heaven, that's us, and, and, and our atmosphere and, and all that we, we see, the firmament above us that sustains uh, the earth. And then you have the heavenlies, uh, outer space, and all that vastness of the universe. And, and then it appears that there's a gulf of water then above that, that separates the heaven and the heavenlies from the third heaven where God is. There's a verse that says, God who is above all waters. So that's the third heaven. When thou passest through the waters, I am with thee, the Lord said. There's a, a whole lot of scripture about that. Uh, baptism, I think, is a picture of that. Through the waters being reconciled to God. Crossing the Red Sea is a picture of, of that where the waters were divided to enter into the promised land. They, uh, the waters were divided. So it's all pictured here. But God divided the waters, separated the waters from the waters and the firmaments in the waters. Now, I, I don't under, don't, I'm not pretending that I understand all that. I don't. Uh, God said, let, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Notice in there that God, the, uh, a day with the Lord begins in the evening. The Jewish day begins in the evening, about 6 o'clock, uh, or traditionally when, at, when three stars are out or 6 p.m. That's what a, a Gila Friedberg told me. Her dad's a rabbi in Toronto and said, uh, uh, six o'clock or when three stars are out. And uh, that's important when you get into the chronology, when we get it at Easter time. It disputes the Good Friday theory. Uh, the Lord was in the, in the tomb three days and three nights. Well, that's... Uh, if, if you count those nights and days with the Lord, he could not have been crucified on a Friday and come up on a Sunday morning. Just don't work. But if you understand that God, the evening and the morning were the first day. <coughs> we won't look at that now. I just kind of want to uh, breeze through some of this and, and, and bring up some points that are, uh, are points of, have been points of, of speculation and argument among theologians. For centuries and centuries. Uh, and God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said let there be waters under the heaven. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And call, God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. That's the argument to... Uh, one of the arguments that I, I, I make with folks that try to blame God for everything bad that happens. This uh, a shooting that occurred. That, that God didn't do that. A man did that. When God finished his creation, when God created things, he looked at it and he said, it is good. It wasn't, God wasn't behind the craziness, that's man's rejection of God that has led to those, those hearts that have turned cold and bitter to God and, and bring forth the fruit of the devil. 
And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now there's a, a, a thing in there about after his kind, and you'll see that with the animals too. That's an important thing with Noah and the ark, and we'll talk about that another time. The animals, it was, they were kinds. Like, like you, you can have two dogs, but that don't, you can, there's a thousand different breeds. But when he's talking about kind, that means a dog is a dog, that kind of thing. It's after its kind. It's not as specific down to, uh, to, to breed and that kind of thing. <coughs> God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding tree, fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So far, everything is good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give a light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. That's when the sun shows up and the moon. All right? And, uh, and to rule over the day and over the night and divide the, to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. A little point there. The sun shows up after the fourth day. The, the sun shows up. Uh, you know, God works... In 7 says one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. You know what showed up after 4,000 years on this earth? The Son of God. And Malachi, he's referred to as the S-U-N of righteousness. Just a little sidebar there. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> then there's two more days. And we're in that period of we're at the end of that 2,000 year period after Jesus Christ showed up. Then there was rest. Wow. Then there was rest. Man, this, this book will set you free. Reading this book should be fun to you. Man, there's so many, many things in there. And then you got to dig through it and go other places. See what it says about it over here and over there. We talked about the sons of God. Over in Jude, it talks about those who left their first estate. Talking about those fallen angels, sons of God. Left their first estate. And uh, uh, mixing with strange flesh. It's weird. And the evening and the morning were the third day. We saw that. And, and God made two great lights. Made the stars also. Uh, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven." And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. There it is again. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Interesting to note, you know, before God created anything, he pre-supplied everything that, all, that his creation would need. Before he created those great whales, you know what he pre-supplied them with? The seas. Before he created the birds, he pre-supplied He created the firmament to sustain those birds. God pre-supplies with everything that someone will need. Just thought I'd throw that in. And God created great 
whales. We saw that evening in the morning were the fifth day, and God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. My, my, my. What's he talking about? Let us make man in our image. That's the Godhead. That's the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our image. God has a spirit, the Holy Spirit. God has a soul, God the Father. God has a body, Jesus Christ. You have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. Well, Adam was created in the image of God. And... Uh, and when Adam sinned, and that'll take too long to, to develop this, but when Adam sinned, something died that day. You remember? We'll, we'll get into that. Probably not today. But said, of all, of, 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 of all the trees of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, the tree between the, uh, the, the, of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Well, they ate it. They ate of that tree. They didn't die physically. Adam lived another 800 years. Their soul didn't die because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? So the soul didn't die. The, uh, the body didn't die. What died? His spirit. That spirit that gave him the image of God, uh, as Doug Rogers says, he was unplugged from God, from that spiritual life that is in Christ, in God. And even though Adam was born with a live body and a live soul and a live spirit, when he sinned, that spiritual life was gone. And we'll see later that, that Adam begat sons and, gods, sons and daughters after his likeness. No longer after the likeness of God. I was not born in the likeness of God. I didn't have the spiritual image of God. Adam lost that for me. I was born in the likeness of Adam after the fall. I had a live body, a live soul, but I had a dead spirit. That's why the Lord said that you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My, my, my. Where was I? So God... Oh, and notice here, it gave man dominion. Now, there's... What God told man to do with this earth and with all, all the wonderful things that this earth provides, he gave man dominion over it. And, and environment, there's some extreme environment that, environmentalists that don't want man to have dominion over this earth. And God told man to subdue it. He didn't say hide it away and protect it. He said subdue it. You use it. Thought I'd throw that in. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created him then. Man, that, that blast one, that blast the LGBT, whatever it is, community out of the water. Male and female created he then. That's God's way. That's how God reproduces and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. There it is. Watch it. And subdue it. You're to subdue the environment. I don't want to make anybody mad here. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Don't take the bass. You can catch all the bluegill you want. Don't want you taking the bass. Well, I heard that so much when I was a kid. Care if I fish? Yeah, but just don't take the bass, man. <laughs> hey, but the Bible says I'm to have dominion over that fish. I said, no, it's my fish. I got. Eh. Now I'm getting personal. Yeah. 
Somebody comes fishing in my pond and said I, don't, said, I don't care what you keep. You keep everything you catch. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. <coughs> my, my, my. Isn't that interesting? And God said, Behold, watch this. Oh, this is, I like this. Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. Man were vegetarians. Getting, now it's getting quiet in here. Now look at the next verse. You think that's something. And to every, every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so that verse just said all the animals were vegetarians well you mean yeah tigers ate hey Tigers, lions, they were not carnivores. And we'll, I can show you over in Genesis 9 when that changed. But Genesis 9 is after the flood. That didn't happen. They didn't become carnivores till after the flood. Do you know what that means with Noah and the ark? Uh, when everybody said, well, how did those animals would have just eaten each other up? No, they wouldn't have because they were vegetarians. Uh, all he did was load that ark up with hay. Animals did not have a predatory nature here in Genesis. No predatory nature. What's that tell you about Noah with the animals getting them into the ark? They were tame. They weren't predatory. Wow. Isn't that wild? Man, a King James Bible will clear up uh, an MIT education, folks. But you know, uh, in Genesis 9, then they became carnivores. And said the blood of man will require the blood and this and that. That's in Genesis 9. But you know, during the millennial reign of Christ, that that all changes back. Remember where it says in Isaiah, the lion will lay down with the lamb and a child will play over the cockatrice den and, and a bear will eat provender like the ox. Animals will lose that predatory nature in the millennial reign of Christ. Isn't that wild? That's pretty cool. He said, for nothing shall hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. And that millennium's full of animals. So it's, well, will I get to see my dog in heaven? Well, the millennium's full of animals. DNA hadn't gone anywhere. The Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. If, if, if you want that little mutt next to you, that's no big deal for God. That's a little simple thing. Man, those hunting dogs of mine all have big fights when I, if they all show up. I'd say again, Lord, let me have, one, have, have them one at a time. All right. But isn't that interesting? Then let me run to Genesis 9 real quick. I found this. I was sitting at the licensed branch in Lawrenceburg. I'd been looking everywhere to see where that changed, where the animals got the predatory nature. God blesses Genesis 9, knowing all his sons, and setting them fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. The fear of you shall be the dread of you upon every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, everything that moves upon the earth. And into your hand they are delivered, every moving thing, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, thou shalt not eat, for surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother. And whosoever sheddeth man's blood, here it's, it's, it's the, the predatory thing comes about. By man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God I am. 
So, so beasts got the taste for blood in Genesis 9. Thought I'd throw that in. I'm about to, and it's time for me to quicken it. And everything that he had made, God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. Not only was it just good, but now he looks over his creation and said, It is very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So many nuggets. And there's, there's a whole ton of views on, on this first chapter of Genesis. And some of them are scriptural. Some of you got to weigh out and look at them. And I said Ken Ham has is, 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 is got a little different idea. It's scriptural. Ken Hovind also. Brilliant man. My, my, my. Ain't God good? Boy, and fun just to break open that book and start reading and see what it says. Here's what God says about it. How we put it together just going to take a lot, of, a lot of study, a lot of rightly dividing. Study the scriptures and, and try to rightly divide them as to exactly what God say. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, teach your word, Lord, and just go to the book and open it and look at it and see what you tell us, Lord, and, and uh, uh, discern your heart and your mind and these things, Lord, and we'll thank you and praise you for that. Uh, be with the worship service this morning. Glorify yourself in it and hold me up by the power of your might. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.